Hurricane Helene took out 370 cell towers. That means lack of communication. What if you needed help? What if you needed to contact a, a family member that you need to make sure was safe? Communication is extremely important in an emergency. And today I'm gonna show you how to contact help in an emergency without your cell phone. You can get walkie talkies that can get anywhere from one to five mile range. They're not fantastic, especially like if you're in a city with a bunch of buildings and things like that. But you can also get GMRS, which can definitely get a much longer range. 20 to 30 miles you could potentially get from a GMRS. Walkie talkies you don't need, this is not a walkie talkie, I shouldn't be pointing at that. Walkie talkies you do not need a license or anything, but they do have a very short range, right? Um, now GMRS, it has a much longer range range and you don't need to take a test but you do need to purchase a license um, now ham radio this is a ham radio um, you will need a license and to take a test. Now, I always suggest Ham Radio Prep because they have an online course and I really wish this was available when I took my test uh, because it's so comprehensive and it actually teaches you legit, like, what does this mean? Why am I doing this? How do I program a radio? Ham Radio Prep is honestly the best place. Like I've taken their course after the fact and it actually made me realize some things that I didn't realize before I got my license. Before, uh, when I got my license, I just like read the book and I I was like, what is happening? My husband's super smart about this stuff and I've become a lot smarter over the years. But once you get your license, you understand how the radio works, how to um, you know, enter in frequencies, all these things, you can actually use the radio. Without the license, you can get the radio and you can listen. But here's the thing, do you know how to enter in the frequencies? Do you know how to reach out um, in a time of crisis? You can't actually use the radio until you have your license. So. I suggest getting your license, trying out the radio, knowing how to use it. Now, your local ham community is really where it's at. Once you get your license, you go to the community. Even before you get your license, you can go to the ham community and be like, hey, I'm interested in my license and ham radio. Can you talk to me about it, etc." So you talk to the local ham club because they are just filled with knowledge and they are eager to talk to new people, okay? <laughs> they want to talk your ear off about ham radio. They are the best community. community. And when you get on the radio and you're talking to people, they just they just want to chat you know people at the ham community is just awesome okay you can find your local frequencies simply by reaching out to your local ham club um you know and they'll tell you the repeaters what a repeater is is there's a bunch of repeaters so basically you have your radio and then there's a bunch of like repeaters throughout the city state whatever that you can reach and bounce off of in order to get longer distances depending on the frequencies that you're using this is important in the case when there are no hams nearby when the calamity arrives and you have to communicate with hams in far off areas so you have those local repeaters and those um and those frequencies national ham radio frequencies um there's a national simplex frequency which is a good starting po point for most new hams um, and it's often monitored by regular hams the simplex frequency for the 2m and 70 cm bands are this on the screen and i'm going to actually link to a blog post that's going to tell you all this i suggest printing this out i did so you should program these frequencies as well as have them printed out so you know which frequencies are what so you're like okay the 146.520 is the national simplex frequency. I have that in here. I'm going to go ahead and go to it or program it as, you know, number one or whatever you want to do on your radio. And then there's the NOAA broadcasting. So radios, usually ham radios, you will be able to access NOAA weather radio um, broadcasts. So it's the FCC broadcasts live weather updates 24 seven. So the NOAA broadcasts um, over seven different frequencies. And again, they're gonna be listed here on the screen as well as in this blog post that I want you to go look at. This is not my blog post, this is actually from fieldradio.org. Um, I am giving them full credit for this because they have listed out these amazing frequencies and I am simply relaying this information to you guys. So there's other ham frequencies uh, for emergency frequencies. Um, apart from FEMA and NOAA, there are different frequencies monitored and used by various organizations to aid in these type of events. Um, and again, these frequencies are there. There's some for the National Guard, there's some for the Red Cross, there's um, just a, a, a bunch of frequencies that if you're ever in an emergency, you can reach out to these frequencies and be like, hey, I need help. Here's where I am or whatever. And then 
What happens is people can relay this information. So you say, hey, I'm you know, Morgan, I'm in um, San Antonio, Texas. I am um, trapped in my home, it's flooding. You know, I, I live off of this street. And they can relay that information to local officials or whoever, you know, they can get a hold of so that you can get the help that you need. Okay, um, and this is especially important for, you know, again, if you are trapped, if you need medical attention, whatever you need, any type of help, okay, you can also listen to these frequencies in case you are ever um, willing or able to help other people, okay? So um, this blog post, again, I want you to go click down below and print out those frequencies, program them into your radio. Now, again, if you're wondering what I recommend, I do recommend a ham radio. This is what these frequencies are, are really for, GMRS, will have a pre-programmed frequencies and they will be monitored as well. Emergency services cannot monitor all frequencies. So it's a really good idea to know these specific narrow down frequencies so that when you do have your radio, you can reach out. In an emergency situation, yes, you don't need your license. That's true. You can just reach out. So if you programmed it and you're like, listen, I'm just going to keep this radio on the national simplex and that's all I'm going to keep it on. Great. That, that's your prerogative. You know, you want to do that. Okay, great. Um, but I just highly recommend, you know, getting your license now so that you can reach out to the local ham community so that you can reach out to local ham so that you can talk on the radio and get to know the radio and all these things. Yeah, I know. I understand. People don't like the licensing. They don't like this, you know, that they're part of, you know, the system. Listen, you're part of the system already. If you think you're not, you're living in a dream world, okay? If you have this and you say, hey, family, we're going to be on this frequency. Don't pitch, don't pick the national simplex frequency, but we're all going to get our license. And then we're going to pick this one frequency in order for us to reach out to each other. Then you each have your own radios. You keep them in your car. You keep them, you know, somewhere easily accessible to you. We have them in the home. We have them in the car. We have all different types of radios everywhere. You know, you can take just like a little radio like this and just keep it in your backpack and, you know, keep it charged. Um, have, you actually want the extended batteries. We, yeah, this is a small battery, but for most, um, radios, you'll want the extended batteries, um, extended life, right? Uh, you can get the car chargers. So I have this plus we also have one that is plugged into our car. Uh, so we have the car charger option. There's lots of ways to have your radio with you at all times, but the starting point is for you to go figure out what you and your family really need. But it's not just you and your family. It's if I ever needed to reach out for help, how could I? I want you to go down below, print out those frequencies, get them programmed, get your license, okay? Don't be afraid of the license. In a life or death situation, you don't necessarily need your license. You can reach out via the radio, um, but would you know how to? That's the thing. I suggest you go to hamradioprep.com, use my coupon code um, to get started with the um, class and actually get your ham radio license or go ahead and get your GMRS license or start with walkie talkies and just move your way up. Um, if you were to go in any order, go ahead and get some walkie talkies, get a GMRS, and then go ahead and get your ham radio. Uh, hamradioprep.com also has some um, radio uh, options and suggestions at their website um, and I will also link to a few suggestions in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Conquer tomorrow. Bye for today. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.